This video is going to cover how much programming engineers do. Now before I begin, know that this video will mostly cover what you see at university, but also throw a little about what you can see in your career. Also note that every university can differ a lot in this aspect, so don't take this video as a guarantee of exactly what you'll see, but there are many consistencies that should give you an idea of what you can expect. Now to start, pretty much all engineers will do some programming at university, some more than others, but be prepared to take a programming course of some kind at least. Now the three big majors that use a lot of programming you might imagine are computer engineers, software engineers, and computer scientists. These are the majors where you will come across Java, Python, C, and C++. You may learn more, or you may not even learn all of these, but these are four of the most common languages that you'll come across. For those who haven't programmed before, these are four different programming languages that honestly can do a lot of the same things, but they do have their differences and advantages. For example, Java can be used to make Android apps, and Java and Python can be used to do back-end programming for websites. Whereas C and C++ are really important in robotics and programming hardware. These are what you might think about when you think of programming, as these are the kinds of languages that are needed for desktop applications, websites, video games, smartphone apps, robotics, and things like that. Now, if you look up the programming languages used in video games or that Facebook uses for its website, you'll see plenty of others not listed, so there are lots out there. But just note that these are the big ones and you can do a lot with them. And for those who have never programmed, once you learn one language, it becomes much easier to learn another. And going back, for those three big majors, you will be doing a lot of programming in a large amount of your classes, and you'll likely do it every semester. It won't be in every class though, like in discrete math with these majors and counter, you probably won't have a lab or programming, you just focus on the math that computers use and it's simply more of a math class. Or computer engineers take some electrical engineering courses such as circuits, signals, and more, most of which will not involve programming. I will give some examples of these programming assignments soon, but first what about the other engineering disciplines? Well depending on your university you might encounter some different things in terms of programming, but the big and really common thing you'll encounter is MATLAB which I'll explain soon. MATLAB is a very powerful tool that has a lot of cool things built in. Aerospace and mechanical engineers use this a lot, biomedical engineers also see it in a lot of their classes, chemical engineers, civil engineers, electrical engineers, and even possibly computer engineers and more all have a good chance of learning it as well. If you're going into any of these majors, but especially those first three, be ready to learn MATLAB. Now what is MATLAB and what can it do that other languages can't? First of all, MATLAB is a software application you have to purchase and download to your computer, whereas with a language like C, you can literally Google C compiler and start writing and executing code if you want to practice a bit, or you can just download a compiler to your computer. So writing in other languages like Python, C, and Java is completely free. MATLAB also has a lot of built-in functions, though, that can perform mathematical calculations. So for one, it can graph very easily in two and even three dimensions. There's a command where you type in plot, some variable, comma, another, and it just creates a plot. There's a little more to it, but it's that simple mostly. Or let's say you have a matrix A and another matrix B, and you want to multiply them. Well, for those who don't know, to multiply these, you take the first entry in the first row and multiply it by the other entry in the first row and first column. Then you take the entry in the first row and second column and multiply it by the first entry in the second row of the next matrix. You add those and kind of continue this pattern four more times and you'd get another two by two matrix. In a normal programming language, you might have to actually program this entirely. You'd have to tell the program to loop through each entry and say multiply the entry in this row in this column by the entry in another row in another column in the second matrix, add those up, then move on to the next and stop after some amount of times you do this. You need to know exactly how it's done, then tell the computer what to do, which would take several lines of code. In MATLAB, guess how easy it is? You type A times B. So yes, when it comes to calculations, MATLAB is way more powerful, and trust me, this did not even remotely scratch the surface. So what would an intro to computer science or engineering class project involve versus an intro to MATLAB class? Well, keeping it real simple, a computer science class might be like, write a program where you input a word and it outputs the word backwards or input a word and it outputs how many vowels there are, or enter a number and determine if it's prime. On the more difficult side, you could have to do a Sudoku solver, which I did have to do, which obviously involves solving an unsolved Sudoku. Or you could do a Boggle word checker, where given a Boggle grid and a word, your program determines whether it's a valid word or not, because you can only use letters that are touching in Boggle. You'll get into algorithms and have to do things like sort a list of numbers as efficiently as possible. Or you might have to write a compression algorithm so you can communicate a word using as few bits or ones and zeros as possible. And there's of course plenty more, but these are just some fairly basic things you can expect to see as a computer science and engineering major as well as a software engineering major, and these were actual examples students have done. 
Then when it comes to MATLAB, a very early project you could do is if you input a velocity and an angle, you write code that spits out a value for how far a ball would go if thrown that fast and at that angle, plus a plot of its y position over time or distance, where you would implement the physics equations and tell it what to plot. On a more advanced side, electrical engineers could use MATLAB to implement filtering techniques if you want to, let's say, remove background noise from a sound signal. Or an aerospace engineer might make a program where you input a position vector and a velocity vector, and the program creates a 3D model of a satellite's orbit around Earth. Or chemical engineers might use it in a controls class to develop a PID controller to monitor something like insulin absorption. As you can see, these are all more math-heavy engineering projects that also rely on plotting and visualizing data, which honestly is why MATLAB can be so helpful. But it's all about working with data and processing. As an electrical engineer, I did not actually get a noisy sound signal where I filtered it and listened to a crisper sound on a speaker. I simply used MATLAB to put in the numbers that would represent the signal, and at the end I could see, yes, the output was a less noisy looking signal. So MATLAB can be used for a lot, but it's not the thing you need really for being a software developer at Facebook, Google, or Amazon. That doesn't mean these companies don't use something like MATLAB, but it's not as common. And just to give you a slight idea about how much MATLAB can do, there are different toolboxes that you can install depending on what kind of projects you work on so that there are plenty of built-in functions for you. These toolboxes include control systems, aerospace, signal processing, antennas, image processing, neural networking, partial differential equations, finance, computational biology, and over 50 more. If you're doing projects in any of these areas, you can install a certain toolbox that is built in functions that allow you to run algorithms and perform calculations in an efficient manner for those specific purposes. Now there are more computer programs out there that you will use as an engineer depending on what you are. Electrical engineers use LTSPICE or PSPICE to simulate circuits and all the currents and voltages within them. Many other engineers like civil and mechanical and more use CAD or computer aided design for 2D and 3D modeling. There's software for computational fluid dynamics or modeling fluid flow. There's finite element analysis software such as Abacus to model mechanical stress, vibrations, motion, fatigue, and more within a system. And of course, so much more. Some of these do involve programming, but many involve more physical modeling of objects, inputting parameters, and all that. So not endless lines of code, but still computer work. So how much programming do engineers do? Well, definitely some depending on what you study, but for many majors, you won't be doing an overwhelming amount of it. For this video, I reached out to as many engineers as I could with the question of how much programming did you use, and here were their answers. From an aerospace engineer, we use MATLAB in most of the aero classes. We used it for homework, take-home tests, labs, and projects. We used MATLAB to make simulations or plots that would go into PowerPoints or reports, and usually the code would be attached in the appendix. Like, in our first aerodynamics class, we did everything on paper, but as the problems got more complex in future classes, you usually needed to visualize everything through simulations or plotting data. MATLAB made that much easier because you honestly would not want to do a lot of the problems by hand. From a chemical engineer, we just learned MATLAB my last year, but not all chemical engineering programs do. I learned programming mostly on my own, and I always tell people to learn it if they can. Employers really like seeing that you have that knowledge. From a civil engineer, we were required to take one MATLAB course and took another class which was basically doing a lot of mathematical problem solving using MATLAB. Some schools learn Python or Java, but MATLAB comes up a lot. However, I did not use it much for civil engineering problems, and most civil engineers do not use MATLAB in their career. It can help especially if you go into research, but most civil engineers will use CAD or some other drafting tool more than anything which is not about programming. But from another civil engineer in the structural concentration who went to another school, he said, we didn't do any programming. We used some CAD and a ton of Excel. In the workplace, we used lots of structural engineering specific software and listed a few, and also a ton of Excel as well. From a mechanical engineer, we used a lot of MATLAB, mostly in a large amount of upper division courses to represent complicated problems such as dynamic systems, heat transfer, and more. We only took one basic programming course, but then really only used it to do MATLAB. It really depends on your school, but that's what I experienced. Then from a computer engineer, most semesters in college involved at least some programming. After college, however, many people can get jobs as a programmer, but plenty of people get jobs in hardware design, which can involve programming, but it varies a lot how much you'll actually use. I've seen engineers who have done almost no programming in their career, and some who use it all the time. As an electrical engineer, what I would say to someone is I learned programming my first year, and the first class I took was the same as computer science or computer engineering majors. But then I used that programming knowledge purely in classes working on hardware, like programming a display to light up, programming a robot to move, an alarm to go off, and so on. I did not share another class with a computer science major. 
We use MATLAB a little in our controls class, but I mainly used it in my signals classes to analyze complicated signals as the program could do the necessary analysis very quickly. When it comes to your career, it really just depends on what you do that will determine how much programming you do. As a software developer, you'll do a lot, but not so much for a civil engineer designing roads. I read about a chemical engineer working in research who had to use a program to help show how heat would move through a complex system, or how well mixed a salt solution would be at different rotation speeds, which they accomplished using C as the programming language. They also used MATLAB and Python. Now a lot of the code they did not write themselves, but they often had to alter code to do what they needed it to, which required knowledge to some degree of the programming language. Or a biomedical engineer might be using programming and circuitry to work on a prosthetic arm. And yes, biomedical engineers do learn programming and you likely will use a lot of MATLAB. One thing that came up a lot though is that programming can be extremely useful for automating long projects. I read a story of someone who was asked by his boss to create a lot of plots and sort through thousands of pieces of data over a few weeks. He ended up writing code that could take the data and do what he needed to basically with the press of a button, and what would have been over a month of work turned into a few days which can be done with something like Python scripts. This is also a great way to stand out for majors like civil engineering or chemical engineering where you might not do a lot of programming in school, but you can easily impress an employer with your knowledge because a lot of your peers won't have that knowledge. And for anyone asking the question, if I want to learn programming before university, where is the best place to start? You can ask this question to five different people and get five different answers, but looking around the most common answer you'll see, which I would recommend, is to learn Python. It's regarded as the easiest language to learn, you will learn a lot of basic syntax, and once you enter school, even if you never use Python, having that foundation will greatly help with writing even MATLAB code, C, Java, and more. Plus, you might even use it after college anyways. So really any engineer can benefit from this and you can start writing and executing code completely for free with the help of tutorials you can easily find online. You can totally learn C++ or Java first, but so many people point to Python as being the easiest. And it may take several weeks to months to get really comfortable with your first programming language, but once you know one, you can learn your next language usually in a fraction of the time, so just get started with something. Many people are worried because they don't have programming experience before college, but I'll tell you that probably the majority of engineers enter school without programming knowledge. I personally had none when I first started my programming course, and it was a big learning curve, but I got the hang of it. It just took some time to get more comfortable with it. So will it help to know it beforehand? Yes. Do you have to know it before college to succeed? Definitely not. And that's the end of this video. Remember, schools differed so much on this question and none of this was a guarantee of what you can expect, but hopefully it provides some insight. If you liked the video, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.